Hi there, I'm Benny and um, I'd like to show you a little new device I've written. It's a um, sort of hybrid thing, arpeggiator sequencer thing um, um, that is pretty complex. Or you can do a lot, a lot of complex things with it rhythmically. Um, it's opposed to other, many other sequences. It's uh, polyrhythmical, uh, not only polymetric. To just briefly explain the difference to you, um, a polymetric device would, um, let's say you have a 4-4 bar and a 3-4 bar, and you have the same tempo for each step, so to speak, yeah, kind of, um, whereas a polyrhythmic device, polyrhythmical device, you really distribute a count of steps to another count of steps, so the, the time, in the time these four beats, let's say it's one, two, three, four, progress, you have three others that progress too and they meet in the end. Yeah. Um, polymetric, simple, oh, this is annoying, I'm sorry. Polymetric, um, four seconds a beat, uh, like one, two, three, four, and um, one, two, three, one, in the same time, whereas a polyrhythmical device for seconds, one, two, three, four, and this one would, each step would take longer. And if it were seven steps, obviously each step would take, uh, would, would be quicker. Um, and you can, you can achieve some pretty, pretty funny and cool rhythms. Some sound very familiar, others um, sound very strange. Um, so I'll just start with something simple. I have to remember to record. Okay, so um, now I've got I've got turn these off or this one off for now. I've got my four sequences. This is my main measure. If I would change my song tempo, this would obviously be slower. Uh, my my, my uh, main rhythm. Um, this one's mapped out to a kick now uh, to C1, uh, C and so on, um, and. Let's start building something more interesting. You can add, first of all, you can change the count, the time that one sequence needs. Now it's currently one, two, three, four for every sequence. And you can, for example, change it to three. Now it's one, two, three, one, or two, or whatever. So now it's just double time. And the interesting is, thing is you can uh, seamlessly add steps. Now you'd have five. In the same time, uh, your other sequence runs through four steps, and so on. Take nine, up to twenty-four, and as I said, you can change the timing here. It's nine over five now. Um, you can. Um, change the direction of your sequence. Let's put them back to, to, to it's the same timing. Um, have it go backwards or do strange thing that, things like a sine movement or a cosine or a kind of random thing. Not that interesting. Um, you can skip steps. Very modular, so you can like build together the rhythm you like. Now I'd skip every second of three steps, so it gets like a one two three one two three groove. 
change that to what you want or make a very uh, rare variation whatever one to one would one of one would obviously step every, uh, skip every step one of two would be make it an offbeat and so on. Um, you can store presets um, of everything you set up in the thing um, it goes beyond that you can uh, retrigger sequences meaning I want my second sequence only to progress one step if my first sequence hits an active step. So see what happens now. Um, and you can get, yeah, you can build really, really strange stuff with it. Um, you have a performance mode to um, play live, you don't need the, the gimmicks. <laughs> um, you can now this is only like this is just explaining the plain sequencer part um the interesting thing is for for my needs at least is the arpeggiator which um, gives you very much yeah uh, flexibility you can now play chords and your chords are depending on um how you how how you set it? They're sorted. Like now, it's sorted from low to high. No matter how I strum my hit my chord, it's always lowest note next 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 distributed to my sequences. You can change that from high to low. You can scramble them so every time you strum the chord, it will be different, sorted differently. The commonly known as you play it, uh, and you can do a re-scramble, which means um, your chord is re-scrambled, rearranged every certain count. So let's try around with this. It'll probably oh, and definitely take a, a or not definitely, but let's take a um, instrument that's tonal. Uh, just take this one. This is short. Um, there. So I don't know. Something. Something. Furthermore, have the uh, ability to. Is this is pretty practical. This is pretty practical for um, beat sequencing. You have these gate modes. Like if you turn gate on, uh, as you can see in in these quick infos, um, gate uh, notes C to E one, gate sequences one to five dot o o y. Did I write that? Um, so if you have a C note present in a sequence, you will the first sequence will be audible. If you don't, it won't, and so on. Um, you have off just to turn notes off. I'll get to that. Um, I'll turn this stuff back to normal. Okay. Um, you have this editor, which is pretty practical because you can really sequence melodies and then polyrhythmical melodies, counterpoint, whatever you want. Um, if you press your shift key, you have a monitor to listen to each step. You turn on, you have note, velocity, duration, CC, and map, which means you can map this to that. And now you will see, if I play the monitor, this parameter will change. To turn on each parameter, you turn it on here. So now currently we only have map turned on. I'll turn on note 2. This turns off, you know you're in note mode, your notes are coming from the sequence. Turn on velocity, as a matter of fact. Go back, have our sequence run.
doesn't appear to work yet. I'll, I'll fix that. Um... Okay. Um... Furthermore, you have the possibility to uh, automate CC values. I've prepared something here I'm going to show you, but I have to turn off the uh, webcam because um, this somehow doesn't work. So, okay. See you sometime. Got CC controls set to 19 and another sequence set to CC10. Um, here's the curve I've drawn. So, you can do all the stuff you did before. Um, Thank you for your patience.